if you are to give on page advice someone who has just started building an affiliate site for the first time what would it be um on page advice is to stick to the fundamentals um you don't need to go crazy about it we've actually got an article um why don't you go ahead and talk for a second yeah. sure um <clears throat> Yeah, Chris's article will go in depth about that. But typically, you know, uh, as far as on page goes, start with good keyword research so you can get things um, optimized for your slugs. Uh, so, you know, the URL slug, whatever comes behind the um, actual website or domain. And then, uh, you know, things like your titles, meta descriptions, etc. Yeah, meta doesn't really have too much to do with. Uh, so I'm going in and I'm dropping SEO, the link but... in, the, in the chat. And yeah, just like Nick was saying, so we've got an on-page guide and there are more advanced on-page guides out there. But to be totally honest with you, when we're doing on-page SEO, this is pretty much what we're doing. We don't yeah. overthink it. Um, this probably leaves out some stuff like... Um, I like how, it how it's yeah it's kind of older like how we're how we're doing uh with like surfer oh um, right because i mean surfer finding, like, at this point keywords. has become like integral to uh to the but, stuff that we're doing i would feel like um but yeah it, overall you know like we don't preoccupy ourselves too much with things like schema or extreme technical seo um you know it's like get our keyword research done um you know, you can take it as far as optimizing content in Surfer. You know, you're going to have something like Yoast or Rank Math in there um, as a plugin. So let's just say this. You've got the content. Mm. So maybe you did the content yourself or maybe you used a tool like Surfer to, you know, tell you like what kind of keywords you should be going for or what the length of it and stuff like that. Mm. Um, if you don't have Surfer, you can just basically look up the top ranking sites kind of take the average of the the content length and and then um you know maybe do a little bit more than that um you also you're going to want to look at what keywords they're ranking for on the top ranking ones and you're going to want to rank for the same ones to try to kind of um make sure you're basically not leaving anything out of the article so if all of the other articles cover a certain topic a certain subtopic of the main topic then you want your article to have that too basically you don't want to be the only one that doesn't cover it completely um, but yeah, there's multiple ways to go about that. You could do it manually or you could use something like Surfer SEO or Arefs to, um, to kind of break it down uh, just a little bit, you know, more streamlined for you. So you've got your content um, on page. We, you know, we keep it simple. Um, this right here, the core of on page optimization. These are the things um, probably in order right here that are the most important things for on page SEO. Um, your domain name, like, do you have keywords in your domain or not? You know, you might not always have the option to buy a new domain. If you do have the option to buy a new domain, you know, keywords in the domain are great. It doesn't have to be an exact match, could be a partial match. Um, just could have a little, a little, you know, keyword in it. For example, our website is sirlinksalot.co. We sell backlinks and we've got links in our domain name. Um, your inner page URLs, you know, you're going to want to get keywords in your inner page URLs, probably your most important place that you're actually going to get your full keyword in. Uh, your title tags, uh, your H tags, uh, your meta description. Um, looks like we've got another article on, hey, you do have this. I wonder, mm -hmm. did you cover Surfer in this one? I feel like I would have, depending on when that was written. Um, we can click on it real quick, but, I, but yeah, Surfer... I'm, I love surfer now. So yeah, so anyway, you basically want to get your keywords in these in these spots and you want to um, not just hammer the same keyword over and over, you want to change them up. Use variations of your keywords. Um, yeah, you just don't want the same exact keyword over and over in all of them. You can repeat it maybe in a couple of them, but for example, don't have the same exact keyword in your inner page, your in the in the URL, the title tag and the h1 tag, you know, just it'd be better um, it would not be over optimized and you could target more keywords. Um, so basically you're just painting like a more complete picture by just varying them up, changing them up a bit. Um, uh, yeah, so you've got your content optimization and then, yeah, the article goes a little bit more in depth for each, each of these sections, just how to do them. Um, cover content a little bit. Yeah, I guess it covers the basics of content. Um, you know, page speed, uh, people are going nuts about page speed right now because of the um, core web vitals mm -hmm. update. 
Not live. I feel like they're always going crazy over page speed. Like since I started SEO, it was always like, oh, I gotta get that up. Um, yeah, this is this is not something we really um, <clears throat> focus on. You just don't want to be horrible. It's nice for user intent, right? But as far as um, Googs goes, I have a website right now where I don't optimize anything for page speed, and it's ranking everywhere. Um, you know, doing really well, but it is annoyingly slow. So I just need to throw it on a CDN. That's about as far as I go, as far as optimizing. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of trying to get like AA on page speed, but if I get a yeah. C plus, I'm going to be pretty content with that. The only time I would really worry about page speed, if I was working on a really big site and it was like, you know, the, the scores were and, really low, the site's like really, you know, having issues. Well, do you want to jump? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, for page speed, for those of you that don't know, you can always go to websites like GT Metrics um, or Page Speed Insights with Google um, and, you know, run tests there that will give you an idea of um, how well your your um, site speed yeah, is here's performing. GT Metrics. Um the site we can look at. And just so you guys know, um, actually, one of my first... SEO ventures ever was a Fiverr gig um, to optimize page speed and it was a horrible idea because every website operates differently and different things break whenever you're putting um, things on a CDN or doing things like that um, so uh, it didn't last very long but uh, if I find the uh, like the uh, image that I was using for that uh, for that store, I'm going to put it up in the group because uh, it was pretty fun. It was like oh, yeah. Fast and Furious on the back <laughs> of like a car that was flying through, and I'm like, a mega page speed. But yeah, yeah, anyway, I don't want to spend too long on page speed just because it's not. So, like, yeah, Search Engine Journal gets a B, you know. Thing, like, it fine. doesn't. Yeah, and the B is fine. A lot of people are like, you know, there's. They, they can't put this aside until they get A's and you're just wasting so much yeah. time. Like how many, just think and about how many articles you could have written, uh, how many like links you could have built in that time. Yeah. Uh, just any, anything is, is basically you'll get more uh, and out of it than unless you have a really bad score. The funny thing too, though, is a lot of websites, you're not going to be able to optimize to an A just given like the type of plugins you're using or... Um, issues that you'd have um yeah sometimes you just can't get an a um so you know just as best you can one way to do that is through a cdn so yeah the article covers um you know it covers some the basics of page speed the most important stuff um it, we also go into schema a little bit but like we discussed last week schema is not really something we we really concentrate too much on mm -hmm. um you know we could and it'd probably be good as far as um maybe grabbing some additional real estate on page one but um it's just kind of not where it's not where our like expertise I've, is so we I've can't really spent a little time doing it uh you know a few years back and then in the end uh it just i guess wasn't important enough for me to to keep working on um a lot of people i know you know it's just like all right well throw 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 a plug in in like just if like I was working Yoast on a client site if i was working like you know if i was like had a you know, if we're still doing like agency and I'm working like a big client site mm -hmm. and, you know, schema is probably something I would. Yeah. Into, so but, a lot of it comes um, down to with, you know, just your like hourly that. budget, how much you can fit into your hours and whether you think it's worthwhile. If I was working for a big corporation and they were paying me, you know, a lot of money to sit and, you know, figure out technical things and then really optimize for those kinds of things versus these smaller sites that I'm working on where, you know, I might use more gray hat tactics to to boost um, to boost those assets up in the search. So, um, yeah, yeah. Then we got like your interleaking or your URL hierarchy. You know, homepage. Then you got some hub pages, and then basically, you know, so you want your your homepage linking to your big hub pages. You want your hub pages linking to the subtopics of those pages. It's really not uh, rocket science or anything. Um, yeah. And even this, though, because you'll see a lot of people still talk about siloing and such. And I think yeah. we've moved away from that because our interlinking strategy is very random now. It's, you know, if it's pertinent, especially if you're working on a site that you want to act like a normal site, so not a manipulative site, um, you know, your interlinks are going all over the place. Yeah, just um, link to stuff that makes sense. But we mm -hmm. do like to use hub pages. You yeah. Know? Like these could be like category pages yeah. or like your blog role is a big hub page. Um, 
yeah and then of course there's going to link out to everything in that category mm-hmm. just kind of helps google understand things a little bit better not really so yeah. much being manipulative i feel like for newer seos hierarchy does kind of need to be split up into um two kinds of things right which is the overall structure of how you categorize different posts within you know their specific niche or where they're supposed to be um, but then interlinking, um, you know, that's not necessarily how it works. That you don't just link within a silo. Um, at least you don't anymore. I, 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 you know, I wouldn't advise doing something like that. Yeah, just to kind of circle back around, you know, this is the most important part: getting your keywords in these in these spots. You know, your domain, your inner page URL, your title tags, your H tags, your meta description, and of course, in your content. And um, as far as the content. Uh, goes, you know, you can use a tool to see what other sites like uh, keyword density ratios are, or you could just do it yourself. You know, you could literally just pull up their site, search for the keyword, and see how many times they have it divided by the number of words on the page. Um, so if you don't, if you don't have a paid tool that does it for you, you can just do it yourself. Look at the top rankers and see what their keyword uh, density ratios are for for whatever keywords you're trying to rank the page for. But yeah, if you're if you're doing these things right. You know, you're varying your your uh, your keywords up in these important spots, and you've got you know your your content done right, and you've got the the keywords in there, you know, a decent number of times, and you're not stuffing it. You know, you're not like overdoing things. Um, ninety, I feel like ninety eight, ninety nine percent of the time, you're going to do very well, and it, then it just comes down to link building after that. Um, so yeah. Concentrate on this. If you're a beginner, this is like what you should really concentrate on and not having like a absolutely horrible site structure. Right. We see a lot of people that actually have so sites. bad. Like you'll their home page like, sites, yeah. It's like you it's like okay, so you go to their site and you can't like navigate to their main services. Yeah. Like what are you doing? Like, How does this work? Uh, like think about if you're a, a client, you come to your website, like that not even thinking about SEO, but if a client comes to your website, you want them to from the home page be able to find like what they're looking for and what is it two clicks is wait two clicks is that like the the kind of like the um the best practice or whatever to move around uh, so basically to be able to find what they're looking for if a client comes yeah to I, page, ideally to be able to find I, what they're looking for in like two two clicks yeah people are short uh you know have yeah. short so, attention you know, span so you know, it, it helps for uh, your users, but it also helps for your SEO. You know, you want Google, you know, Google cl- crawls your site through links. So if those links don't exist on your homepage, if you can't navigate to your other stuff easily, then you're kind of might be setting up some issues with as far as, you know, link choose flowing to everything properly and Google knowing what's important on your site or not. Um, yeah, focus on this stuff and not having a horrible page structure. Just, you know, focus on users and um, getting the stuff right. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to check the description below for links to our blog for more info on this topic, along with a bunch of other cool stuff like case studies, our Facebook community, and our link building services. And like always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you enjoyed the video. Thanks and happy ranking!